Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, I'm going to be doing some Half Life exam questions. So, I know that a lot of kids struggle in this topic, hence why I'm going to make this video. I'm just going to walk you through a number of these questions. Uh, they're slightly different, and obviously, you have to get your thinking caps on if you want to really try and understand this topic. And before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Okay, and before we get going, also make sure that you've watched my previous video on the Half-Life and the Half-Life Radioactive Dating. Watching those two videos will help you with these calculations. Okay, let's get straight into it. So number one, we have the following. The half-life of radium-226 is 1,600 years. If a sample of radium-226 has an original activity of 200 becquerel, what will its activity be after 4,800 years? Okay, so the first thing that I would say to do is to write down the start and the end. Yes, start and the end. So you know it takes um, 4,800 years. Yes, for this process to occur, 4,800 years. And initially you had 200 becquerel, 200 becquerel at the start. And after 4,800 years, you're going to be asked how much is left over. Well, the key thing is to note that you've got to work out the number of half-lives within 4,800 years. So how many half-lives have occurred? If each half-life is 1,600 years and 4,800 years have taken place, you can simply work that out. So the number of half-lives, the number of half-lives is simply going to be 4,800 divided by 1,600. That's going to be equal to three half-lives. So three half-lives have passed in this time. Of 4,800 years, three half-lives have passed. So we start off over here, we had 200. The first half-life would bring it down and then the second half-life, and then the third half-life over here. The first half-life will drop you down from 200 to 100. Yes, becquerel. Second half-life will be from 100 to 50 becquerel. And then the last half-life will be 50 divided by 2, therefore it'll be 25 becquerel. So my answer is going to be 25. That's how much I'll be left with, 25 becquerel. Yes, so obviously my thinking, guys, number one, I found out how many half-lives passed in 4,800 years. I simply took the total number of years and divided by the value of one half-life. And then from there, I just did the decay process three times here and looked at how much I'm left with. Excellent stuff. Let's try the next question. Sodium-24 has a half-life of 15 hours. If a sample of sodium-24 has an original activity of 500 becquerel, what will its activity be after 60 hours? So let's once again do the start and the end, okay. Uh, how much time has passed? We know that it's 60 hours have passed here. 60 hours have passed here. Um, the original activity is 500, so you had 500 becquerel at the start, and we know that 60 hours have passed. How many half-lives have passed in those that amount of time of 60 hours? Well, all I'm simply going to do is take the total time divided by the value of one half-life. So 60 hours divided by 15, I'm going to get four, everyone. Now from here, I just simply do four half-lives. So one, two, three, and then four, we get to the end over here. So the first half-life, I half the 500, it's 250. Second half-life is 125. The next one from here, I end up with 62.5, and then I divide that by 2 again, I'm going to get the answer of 31.25, 31.25. Excellent stuff over here. So I'm ending up with 31.25, that's going to be the activity becquerel. Okay, and that's my answer. So once again, in this calculation, I took the total of time divided by the value of one half-life, to work out how many half-lives have passed, then I just simply did that four times to work out the final value. Let's do the next question. After 42 days, the activity of a sample of phosphorus-32 has decreased from 400 to 50 becquerel. What is the half-life of phosphorus-32? So we do the start over here and we do the end over here. The start, um, we've got, uh, well, how, many, how long does that take? That takes me 42 days. So 42 days have passed, yes. In that time, I've gone from 400 to 50 over here. What is the half-life of phosphorus? Well, I know in 42 days, it's dropped down from 400 to 50. So let's see how many half-lives that would have, uh, would have occurred for that to happen. So for the first half-life, I go from 400 to 200. 
Next half-life, I go to 100. The next one, I go to 50 over here. So look, one, two, three. So I know that three half-lives have passed. One, two, three half-lives have passed in 42 days. So therefore, the value of one half-life is going to be 42 divided by three which is going to be equal to 14 days. So a slight variation in this question, but look, hopefully you can see that I take the total amount, work out how many half-lives have passed, and I divide 42 by the number of half-lives, then I got the value of one half-life. And over here, it's going to be 14 days. Fantastic stuff. Question four, the half-life of Raiden 222 is 3.8 days. What was the original activity if the activity of, of 10 Beck rule after 7.6 days. So what was the original activity? So a slight variation in the question over here. So we had the start and we have the end. Um, we know that 7.6 days have passed. 7.6 days have passed. The final amount is 10 becquerel. So we're trying to work out the initial. How much is the initial amount here? Well, in 7.6 days, how many half-lives is that? Well, in 7.6 days, how many half-lives have passed? Well, we know that each half-life is 3.8 days. So if I do 7.6 divided by 3.8, I know that two half-lives have passed. So therefore, if the final amount is 10, I can work backwards. So the first half-life, then, then the second one over there. So look, obviously two half-lives, I'm working backwards this time. So doubling the 10, I would get 20 becquerel. And then the original amount I must have had was going to be 40 becquerel over here. So BQ. Look, because if I had 40, the first half-life will bring it down to 20, and then finally at 10 over here. But obviously for this question, I was working backwards. So my answer is going to be 40 over here. This answer is going to be 40 over here. Let's go for question five. Five, the half-life of forum 227 is 19 days. How many days are required for 75% of a sample to decay? Right, so we have, uh, we know that the half-life is 19 days and we're trying to get to 75% of it to decay. So initially we have the start and then we have an end, okay? So you want 75% for it to decay, so you're going to be ending up with 25% only. So I have a 100% at the start, therefore you're ending up with 25% at the end. So how many half-lives is that? You know that it's going to be first half-life brings it to 50 and the second half-life brings me to 25% here. Each half-life is 19 days, so this is 19 days. This is also 19 days. So the total amount of time required for 75% of the sample to decay is simply going to be 19 times by two, it's going to be 38. So 19 times by two is equal to 38 days. So 38 is going to be my answer over here. Fantastic stuff. Question six, the half-life of protactinium-234 is 6.75 hours. What percentage of a sample will remain after 27 hours? Right, so we have the start and we have the end. Uh, and then initially, right now, um, so 27 hours have passed over here. How many half-lives have occurred in that time? Each half-life is 6.75 hours. So if I do 27 divided by 6.75, it's going to be equal to 27 divided by 6.75, I'm gonna get four half-lives have passed. So four half-lives have passed over here. So four half-lives have passed. Um, if I had 100%, the first half-life will be equal to 50%. Second half-life will be equal to 25%. Third half-life will be equal to 12.5%. And then the final half-life after four half-lives are going to be equal to 6.25, 6.25% over here. So yes, my answer is going to be the percentage of a sample that will remain after 27 hours is 6.25%. Obviously, this question was slightly different because it asked me about a percentage. I knew the initial amount must have been 100%, and that's the reason why I went from 100 to 50 to 25 to 12. 5 to 6.25. Question 7. A rock once contained 1 milligram of uranium-238 but now contains only 0.25 milligram. Given that the half-life of uranium-238 is 4.5 times by 10 to the power of 9, 4.5 billion years, how old is the rock? You know you had at the start and then we have the end over here. So at the start uh, we have 1 milligram and now it only contains 0.25 milligrams over here. Yes, the half-life is going to be this much, 4.5 times 10 to the power of nine. How old is the rock? Right, 
So for the first half-life, it will drop down to 0.5 milligrams, and then the second half-life, it drops down to here. So two half-lives have passed in order for it to go from 1 milligram to 0.25. So in each half-life is 4.5, so I've gone, I'm going to do 2 times by 4.5 times by 10 to the power of 9, because one half-life is this, and I've got twice the amount. Therefore, I'm going to get 9 times by 10 to the power of 9 years have passed. Excellent stuff. So this question, uh, obviously making sure that you can actually use standard form as well. Yes, slightly different as well. It had the mass instead, but it's still the same principle. Last question. The half-life of tritium hydrogen free is 12.3 years. If 48 milligrams of tritium is released from a nuclear power plant during the course of a mishap, what mass will remain after 49.2 years? Well, once again, I'm going to do the start and I'm going to do the end over here. So in 49.2 years, how many half-lives have occurred? So I'm going to do the 49.2 divided by 12.3. Therefore, it's four half-lives. So four half-lives have occurred. So um, if I had, so at the start, we have 48 milligrams at the start and four half-lives have occurred. So the first half-life, second half-life, third half-life, and then the fourth half-life. So the first half-life brings it down to 24. Second half-life brings it down to 12, then it's going to be 6, then it's going to be 3. So my answer is going to be 3 milligrams over here. So my answer is going to be 3 milligrams over here. Okay, guys, and that's it for another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. If you're still struggling, comment below and I'll do my best to obviously answer your queries. But obviously put the time in and you should be able to succeed in physics. Take care, ciao, ciao, and goodbye.